pretty simple once you get a grip on things. So we're going to be doing some stuff with perfect squares or factoring with what's called square roots today. So there's one big kind of clue that you're going to have any time that you're doing factoring with square roots. You'll notice there's no term in the middle. There's only two terms now. That's going to be your biggest hint. But your best friend on these is knowing your squares. Now, if you don't know these, you can always jot them down somewhere. You'll always have you'll always have some sort of notes. So you'd always have an option of being able to use this when we got to a quiz, test, something like that. But it's just simpler to know them. So for instance, Um, I will come back to final issues on that when we get a little bit closer. So, if I see the shorties, that's what I like to call them because there's only two terms instead of three, basically I'm looking to say what can I multiply by itself to get each one of these. So if I just have a variable like n or x or something like that, well, what times itself would be n squared? Well, n times n because we know that to be a fact. The 64, if I don't know, I can always come up here. Well, there's 64. The number that goes squared with it's 8. So I just put 8 in each one, and I'm always going to use plus or minus. And the order doesn't matter. So if I wrote it this way instead, I'd get the same answer. Okay? If I went ahead and foiled it out, it would come back to n squared minus 64. And that's all there is with these. So there's not a whole lot of in-depth complexity with them. All I'm going to do each time is when I see one of the short ones, I'm going to make two sets of parentheses. I'm going to say, OK, what do I times by itself to get 4? 2, because even if I look up here, well, there's the 4. Oh, it's 2 squared. So it's the number in front. It's 2. What do I square to get m squared? Well, it's just the variable m. What do I times by itself to get 81? 9. So I always know it's plus and minus, so I got 9. And then whatever the variable is, I just put that in. And I'm done. That's factored. All right. We'll get you focused in on this one. We'll be ready to roll. Nope. As long as they're all there. So any of these, what do I times by itself to get x squared? x or whatever variable it is. I always put plus and minus in the middle when I have the shorties because that's how a difference of squares works. And then here, what do you times by itself to get 81? If you're not sure, find the 81 up here. There it is. And whatever number says in front, 9 squared, I just use the 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. I'm always using the same number for both. So it's not like if I got something like, I don't know, 16, that it'd be 8 and 2 or something like that. They're always going to be the same number, and then I'm done. Because you're like, well, wait a minute, you're telling me this equals that. Yes. You're like, well, that I'm not sure about that. Well. Let me just show you for one of these how I can prove that that's true. So if I were to take that and say, okay, let's FOIL or box this out and see what we get for an answer. Well, x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. And negative 9 times positive 9 is negative 81. You're like, see, Hardy, there's stuff more there than just those two. But let's take a look closer. OK, there's x squared. What happens when I have 9x and I take 9x away? They cancel out, and there's the x squared minus 81. It's the same thing. So that kind of lets you see how this works. But as you're doing these, you may not always have one that's just going to be a variable. So let's say like if we went down to number 6. Okay, it's a little bit more like what number 2 was. What number do I times by itself to get 36? 
6. So 6, and I take my variable, which is x. So 6 times 6 is 36. x times x is x squared. And then I know it's plus minus. What do I times by itself to get 100? There's my 100. That would be 10. So I put a 10 in each spot and whatever my variable term is. And I'm done. So again, as you're thinking about these, If you just see the variable there, just write the variable down. Exactly. What Does times? Matter, nope, not at all. You can absolutely have it this way, or if some of you decided you were going to write it like this, both of those will get me the same answer at the end. So that's absolutely just fine. So I'm going to hit up with 8, and then I want to hit some of these other ones down here a little bit. Kind of do some reviewing. Kind of see how this is all working out here. Okay, let me move this back down so we can actually see the numbers up there. Okay, what do I times by itself to get 25? 5. So I put a 5 in each spot, and I see there's an A. So I get 5A and 5A, because 5 times 5 is 25. A times A is A squared. Yep. And what times itself is 36? That would be 6. Woohoo! Now, are we going to get to a point where we're going to kind of start blending these somewhat? Mm hmm. There will be. So if I move a little bit further down on the sheet, so let's say, let's look at 14 for a second, and then I'll kind of come back to a couple of things. Now 14 is back like what we've been doing for the past couple of days. We're back to a diamond. So here, just kind of as a reminder, and it's a nice little review to get in here, we're looking to multiply to get the number on the end and add to get the same number in the middle. Now here again is what we sort of looked at. We're detectives of sort. So when I'm looking at this, I go, okay, Numbers that multiply to 30 that add up to 11. And I always start with the 1 and the 30. But then I can either go to my chart to try and help me. I can find any place in the chart where it's 30 and see if those numbers work. So if I were to go to the chart here, I'll go ahead and do it for you this time. Here are the pairs of numbers that you would find. Okay, yeah, and I'm looking for the pair that if I, in this case, add them up because I'm like, oh, multiply to a positive and add to a positive. So I know both these numbers are going to be positive. And like Eric just mentioned, 5 plus 6 is 11. 5 times 6 is 30. That seems to be a good match. But when I'm factoring, remember, still always go to the parentheses at the end. Whatever my variable is, I write that down. And then I put a positive 5 in one of them and a positive 6 in the other. And it doesn't matter which order they're in. If you did plus 6 and then plus 5, that's perfectly fine. But that's the only type of things that can come up here on these. Now, are there some things that can get a little screwy? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Hence the bottom of the page here. So I get down here and I go, okay, multiply to 121 and add to 22. Now, is there any place on your sheet or in your head that multiplies to 121? Because there's not going to be a whole lot of options here. I don't think 1 and 121 is going to work. It is. 11 times 11 is 121, and 11 plus 11 is 22. That works out well. So get my x's in there, because that's my variable, and then just copy the numbers. And we're good to go. 
The last thing that I worry about with some of you, if this happens, and I want to make sure we do one, so I want to look at 19. Oh, hey, Hardy, they put r squared at the end and the number at the beginning. When this happens, here's my suggestion. I would rewrite it, keeping all the, oops, and then I almost lost my variable. The 169 is positive, so I put the plus there. Just so you don't get mixed up and think you're multiplying to 1 and adding a negative 26. You wouldn't be able to do that anyway. So when I get there, I'm like, ooh. Multiply to 169 and add to negative 26. Okay, I was going to say, here's where we get a little detective work in. If it multiplies to get a positive, but adds to get a negative, the only ways I can multiply to get a positive would be positive, positive, or negative, negative. But since they add to negative, I know both of my numbers have to be negative. So my only job left, 169, now we're getting large numbers working here. I think, yeah, I know it is. This one's on your chart too. And I just missed this one on the chart up above. All right, let's see here for a minute. All right, let's see. There's 169. So if I follow that, there's 13. And I follow this way, 13 and 13 it looks like. Hmm, perfect square. 13 and 13. And that adds up to 26. But remember, I put those negatives in ahead of time to help me remember, oh yeah, Negative and negative get me more negative when I'm adding. But negative times negative is positive. So I get, okay, r is my variable. And I just have a negative 13 in each place. So what you're going to start seeing is I'm going to start blending the shorties, the ones with only two terms, in with the three termers to kind of start getting you some practice so when we do get to the unit test, piece of cake. Okay. Questions, questions, questions. Or other ones on this sheet that you want to take a closer peek at. And I actually see one that I want to take a closer peek at. So I will ask my own question. 13. Don't let the fact that the number's there first mess with you. I know it's going to be plus and minus. You're like, wait a minute. I don't see 225 up in the list anywhere. So what do I do if I see a number that I don't know and it's not in the list? Okay. For perfect squares, here's how we're going to do it. I can always take a number and try to take its square root. So if you're using the fancy schmancy calculators here, if you hit second and x squared, that'll get you the square root button. And then you can just type the number in. So here, I have 15 at the start for each one. And my variable's b. So I put b with those. And then I don't have a number in front of my a's, so I'm just going to use the variable. Okay. And that's really, I think, the only other flip you could possibly get on one of these that you might have to deal with. Just a reminder. The worksheet's out for this one today. It's just a blend of these and the diamonds. We're going to go into review mode on Wednesday and Thursday. And then when we have the unit test Friday, all the work from this unit needs to be in by then, okay? including the reviews, because we're going to do those in class. So there's no re the reason that those aren't going to be done. So if you can have those ready to go, that would be great. If you have any questions, let me know.